And you'd be surprised. I've met some guys, guys, I, I haven't met the first woman to say this yet, but some guy pros that don't believe in sunscreen. And I'm like, hey, do you boo, whatever. <laughs> I'm putting my sunscreen on, thank you very much, but hey. Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today we have Jennifer, is it Gel House? Is that correct? Gail House. Gail House. Joining us, she is the host and creator of Vita Tennis Podcast, amongst many other amazing things. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to talk to you today. This is kind of a fun episode, I think, for both of us because we haven't actually met in person. We've only discussed things on email for like a week, but we just got introduced to each other from the amazing people at Ace the Moon. And right when you signed on, even seeing the logo on your shirt, that's like my little logo on all of my uh, communication. So I'm like, okay, we're going to be friends. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this is a uh, unique low. <laughs> nice. I love it. So awesome. Um, well, before we get into it, why don't you give us a little bit of a background of who you are? I was doing some research on you. I was Googling you. You've done some amazing things, really cool story. So tell us about you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm a tennis professional. So tennis professional instructor, <laughs> not to be confused with, uh, <laughs> with the pro playing on the tour. Um, so yeah, I live here where I'm now, which is Tampa, Florida, and I teach here all ages, uh, different levels. And then in the summers, I teach in the Northeast. I was in, yeah, you know, I've been doing that for about 10 years now where I split my time between Florida and the Northeast. I was in the Hamptons for about seven years. And then the last four years I've been going to Martha's Vineyard. So I spend the whole summer there. It's it's wonderful as a tennis pro to get the opportunity to do that because, you know, the weather here in Florida in the summer is not ideal for tennis. It's really hot, mm -hmm. rains every day. So if your income depends on that, it's not the best situation. Um, and, you know, I get to go up to the Northeast, meet some amazing people, work at great clubs, and it's just such a good vibe. You know, it's it's really busy. Um, it's hard work, but I absolutely love it. And it's not for everyone, you know, but it's definitely for me. I mean, I've been doing it for a decade and I love it. So <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. I used to, I mean, like California is a little bit different because we're like, what, 70 degrees all year. <laughs> but <That's perfect. laughs> right? I know, but I used to summer, do my summers in Santa Barbara and I would teach and coach in the summer in Santa Barbara. So I always felt like it was a second home and it's always kind of fun, at least if you've got that personality to like just have some, a change of scenery for a bit and then come back home. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love the change of scenery for sure. I love that. <laughs> um, and then tell me your background. You are a tennis player, grew up playing tennis and you're from Venezuela, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I am originally from Venezuela. I started playing tennis kind of late. So I was 11 years old when I first touched a tennis racket and I was 16 years old when I went to college. Okay. I came here to the U.S. for college on a tennis scholarship, played D2 at a school called Lincoln Memorial University. Um, so my junior career was really short, um, but very intense, which is just kind of my personality. I'm very intense, I guess. Um, you know, I was playing tennis three, four hours a day, trained really hard. I was in a great competitive environment with really good players. Um, so and obviously obsessed with tennis. So, um, you know, I got to play in some international tournaments as a junior, but didn't get the chance to, I think, fully develop mm -hmm. before coming to college. But I had a great experience. Absolutely love playing college and ended up staying here. I, I studied biochemistry. Thinking That's crazy. That I was, <laughs> was going to be a, a, a scientist, which I did for four years. Um, but then I realized that I missed tennis a lot and it just kind of pulled me back in. And, you know, I've been in the tennis industry for 15 years now and never look back. I absolutely love it. I always laugh at that because uh, those of us that are in the industry played all through growing up and all that. It's kind of we always have that moment where like, is tennis meant for us? But let me try something else. And then we always go back always. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's also something to the fact that I started playing tennis late in quotation marks, right? When I yeah. was 11. I think for tennis, competitive tennis players, that is kind of late. Um, but I think the fact that I started later in life uh, means that I really like it. I think sometimes players that started really young, maybe it wasn't their choice. Maybe they were pushed really hard by their parents. 
and they just kind of burn out and don't really find that passion for tennis. So, totally. you know, it, it's a good thing, I think. No, that makes sense. Um, and then talk to me a little bit about your podcast. How did it get started? It seems like it's a good match for our podcast because you geek out on all things tennis and we do as well. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge tennis geek. Um, so, you know, the last four years, especially during the pandemic, I was super into podcasts, just uh-huh. listening to podcasts all the time. It got to a point where uh, I wasn't even listening to music anymore. It was podcasts wherever I would go in my car, in my headphones. Um, and so then it got me thinking, maybe I should start a podcast. This sounds like something that would be really fun. And at the time, there wasn't really that many um, tennis podcasts out there. Um, but anyway, it took me a while to finally get started because I never felt ready. I, I was just kind of putting it off because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and then this year, for some reason, I was like, ah, let's just do it. You know? <laughs> Even though I don't know what I'm doing, I've been kind of learning along the way. Um, so I think that's the best way to to just commit to something. It's mm-hmm. just go all in and, and just force yourself to get started. And once you get started, you gain some momentum, right? So I started in March um, and I took the full summer off basically because I'm on court like, you know, anywhere from six to 10 hours a day. So mm-hmm. it's really hard to schedule people and um, and take the time to, to do all the research and all the things that go into creating a podcast episode. And, you know, my episodes are about an hour long. Um, I have about 35 of them. It's named Vida Tennis because Vida is life in in Spanish. So I wanted it to be kind of reflective of me being bilingual and all that. Um, and, you know, it's basically about that tennis lifestyle. So my motto is it's the podcast for those of us who eat, sleep, breathe tennis. Right. So it's not just the tennis players. It's those of us that like our income, um, our livelihood, <laughs> most of our day is tennis. It's the air we breathe. It's the food that we eat. Um, so it's meant to be for, you know, people in, in the tennis industry, but honestly, I've heard from people that are fans and, and players. So, you know, the audience is kind of all over. Yeah, that's amazing. And who have been some of your favorite episodes that you've had so far? Like what are ones that stand out? Yeah. I mean, I've had so many different ones. So I've interviewed tennis directors, um, from all kinds of places like academies, from these really amazing clubs, like in Martha's Vineyard. Um, I've interviewed, um, you know, this lady, Kathy Woods, who, you know, she was um, the first director at the USDA National Center. Um, uh, Who else? The um, CEO of Cliff Drysdale. Uh, You know, just kind of all over. So we cover club management, tennis coaching, Um, you know, the lifestyle of a tennis coach, just to kind of find connection, right, amongst Mm -hmm. coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I had um, Harry Tong from, you know, uh, he's a a gear expert like you, Uh, you know, some influencers. So kind of everyone, it's a good mix. I even did one recently with a sustainability expert and and I got to interview him and learn about how we could be more sustainable in tennis. So awesome. I thought that was really interesting to me, at least as a, as a big nerd, but, um, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a mix of different people. It's hard to pick a favorite because they're all different. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just, I just appreciate everyone that, that takes the time to, to do this with me. You know, it's, it's been really great. Yeah, there's something special about podcasting and just kind of like having that deep conversation or not even it doesn't even have to be deep, but it's just like a conversation. And I know you mentioned that you like wanted to start it and took forever Um, between wanting to start this one, I think, and pushing out the first episode. It was eight months for me. So I totally know that like you're it's it's a it's a hustle. And, you know, like like you, this is just one part of lots of things that we do in the tennis world. And it's but it's really cool. And it's always like something that I look forward to. Yeah, Uh, me too. Yeah. And then I have to ask because I'm also a podcast geek, obviously. Um, What's your favorite non-tennis podcast? Or do you have a couple favorites? Like, what are you listening to when it's not tennis? So um, I actually 
rarely listen to tennis podcasts. Same. It's probably not good. But it's like, I already do a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Tennis. It's like too um, much. So I don't listen to a whole lot of, of tennis podcasts. Um, but I listen to a lot of, oh, I'm into like some woo-woo stuff. Okay, <laughs> hit me with and it. it. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I like, uh, my favorite one is probably called, um, the one called Kathy Heller. Um, she does, uh, it's like personal improvement and uh, women empowerment. Yeah. And it's just really inspiring. I just listen to it every week and it's just a moment to reflect, get inspired, and it has nothing to do with tennis. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> do you ever listen to Gabby Bernstein? Yes. yes. <laughs> Love Gabby. Okay, yes. yes. So <laughs> I'm on the same page. Like, every Monday, hers comes on. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I I like – Yeah, Gabby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I get it. Um, I also – I think it was during the pandemic where I was like – no, we are not going to turn on the news. We are not going to watch TV. We are going to listen to something. And I grew up listening to um, talk radio in Los Angeles, which I don't know if that's a big thing everywhere or just LA, but my mom would pick me up from school, drive me to tennis and like talk radio would always be on. So there's something like very comforting to me to like listen to conversations. Mm -hmm. And I'm like you, like I wake up, put on a podcast. I'm like, go for a run, put on a podcast. So The other one that I really like is uh, Jay Shetty. Oh yeah, he's good. He has a great one and he he interviews all these famous people and you know, they just talk about life and yeah, it's really good. I used to be obsessed with Super Soul Sunday. I haven't listened in a minute. But yeah, right? <laughs> I'd like go for a hike and just like get like all these amazing tips and tricks and vibes from Oprah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> right? I know. I'm like obsessed with Liz Gilbert and she would be on there and I'm like, oh my gosh, tell me more. And yeah. So, <laughs> yes. so uh, just a quick story. I, I took this job uh, right before the pandemic in Vero Beach, which is like three hours away. And I was kind of commuting because I was trying to see if I liked it there. And, you know, before I fully committed my family to moving yeah. know, to another town. So anyway, whenever I was in the car driving by myself, I mean, that Oprah's soul, what is it called? Soul Super, soul. Super Soul Sunday. <laughs> Super Soul Sundays. Yeah, that's all I listen to. And sometimes I would be like driving and crying. Crying, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to play some music to like, clear my mind. <laughs> I uh, yeah or like I'll like grab my phone not when I'm driving but I'll like grab my phone and like start taking notes and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man well that's cool I like hearing that um I also like fun real like really random ones too so that's totally fine <laughs> also if you're <laughs> not into all of the self-help <laughs> that we are yeah <laughs> um what else was I going to say? Okay, so we're going to kind of make this a little bit of a holiday edition. The holidays are here, and you see all kinds of tennis players, including coaches, manage club management, people that are obsessed with tennis but maybe don't play tennis. So I thought maybe we would just talk through some, like, gift ideas, your perspective, my perspective, and maybe we can just help the people out with some things that maybe they haven't thought of because at this point in our lives, we've had several c- holidays with – tennis being our our favorite thing in the world and uh you you get bored of the same old thing so I don't Mm -hmm. know what do you think where should we start um I don't know it it, it, to me it's all the same so wherever wherever you want to start okay so (laughs) so, uh, let's talk about um gifts for our listeners who maybe have a coach that's important in their life or a teaching pro or someone that like they have a close bond with I know a lot of times I joke that like coaches can also feel a little bit like therapists some days and like Mm -hmm. you know there's some people that come to the tennis court and they just want to hit thousands and thousands of balls but there's other people that want to talk through it so let's (laughs) what are some um have you gotten any really cool gifts from students and what were they? Yes. So it's so nice. You know, people are so nice uh, to always take care of their coaches, you know, during the holidays. Yeah. Even if it's just like a little thank you note, it's always special. It always means a lot to us uh, to just feel appreciated. And, yeah. And I highly encourage everyone to to do that. Even if it's just, here's 10 bucks. 
uh, or a ten dollar gift card. Go get a coffee. Day. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's fine. Totally. You know, it's just it's just the gesture of it. It it, it means a lot. Yeah. Um, if you want to kind of splurge or pamper your coach, I always. I'm always good for a massage. Yes. I think coaches, you know, it's a very physical job. So I think a massage is always very well received <laughs> <laughs> for a coach. Um, and if you wanted to get them something more tennis related, um, I think coaches always need shoes. Right. So if you can find, you know, what shoe they like, what size they are, boom, you're set. But we always need shoes. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like coaches are very like, they don't want to try anything else. Like they love the shoe that they're wearing and that's yeah. it. So like new colors, like just update. Like Absolutely. I'm definitely like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of what shoes do you wear? Like what's your, your tennis gear? Um, I'm a Nike obsessed. You're a Nike gal. <laughs> I, I love the Nike court stuff. Always have, always will. I, that's the brand that I've always worn for everything, for clothes, for shoes. Um, it's not even like the, like that I think that the quality is so far superior. It's more the look. Yeah. I like it because it, it just, it feels uh, like it looks more athletic, not necessarily super girly, but more athletic and, and sporty. And I just really like it. Uh, and same for the shoes. Um, I've always worn Nike shoes. I think the Vapor is the one that I use. Um, and it, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, they actually don't like Nike shoes. They yeah. say that they're really uncomfortable, but a girl's going to look good. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to wear right. a Nike shoe, even if it will be the death of me, because there's so many shoes that are really comfortable, but they are ugly. <laughs> True. And I will not be caught that wearing those things. True. So I will wear the Nike shoes. I, I have issues with my feet, um, but I wear inserts. I pay a lot of money for my really good inserts. Um, and I just deal with it. <laughs> well, uh, you've hit on so many things. Uh, Nike just released, well, I guess not just, but a couple weeks ago released their holiday collection, which like it's not really called like holiday, but it's always a little bit cuter and like has a little bit extra shine, a little bit of prettier colors. And the women's Nike, it's right now it's like PRM on the website. It's so pretty. It's like these deep, rich pinks with like these metallic hits and then the black they look so good i don't oh, know i don't know if you've gotten any yet but no not yet okay yeah. um i you know i i was obsessed with the shoes that serena wore that had the diamonds on oh it. yeah oh yeah <laughs> um. <laughs> we love a sparkle for sure yes. <laughs> yes same um and then also like you said a lot of people don't like nike because they aren't as generous in width so I think people with wider feet struggle, but yeah. you also mentioned putting in inserts and like that is a game changer. Like pay for yeah. those inserts and then you're like set and you're good to go. Especially for tennis pros because we're on there for hours. I don't even know how I would make it without inserts anymore. Right. Like, if I forget my inserts or, you know, yeah, like buy new shoes and forget to put them in. Oh, my feet will <laughs> hurt like no other. So I have to wear my inserts. Um, um and I do have narrow feet, so maybe Nikes are not terrible for me. They work for you. It's your yeah. it's your sole brand. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, I was just talking to someone, and I was like, I don't think I could ever go back to teaching full time, just because it's so hard on your body. Like it's a long day. It is. I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> and it's tough because it's like you're not always playing, but even like just standing and feeding is just as intense as if you were playing. It's almost better to be having a hit hitting lesson, in my opinion, than just feeding. I'd rather hit all day than just like feed or like work through. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have the mix. Oh, which makes me think also um, another good idea for a tennis pro is anything sun protective, at least if you live in Florida, we are sun protective obsessed. Yeah. Um, I. I don't even wear cute tennis outfits anymore. It's kind of a shame mm. because I now wear uh, leggings. And can we please normalize leggings in tennis? Hello. <laughs> um, I love leggings and I wear long sleeve, like UPF, long sleeve shirts. You know, I look like a ghost with all my sunscreen. So like anything sun protective, I think it's always really good for, for the tennis coach in your life. Uh, do you wear hats? Are you a hat girl or visors? So 
I refuse to wear the really goofy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to look somewhat like a normal person. Yeah. At least for me. <laughs> um, so I just wear visors. Um, but uh, I actually found this hat that I'm obsessed with. And I don't know the name of the brand, but it's a hat. And it has in the, the back. Ponytail the ponytail thing. Yes. Yeah, for your hair. Yes. It's the best thing. I'm like, this has to be. This had to be designed by a woman. It was. It's so brilliant. <laughs> I need to find it. I was literally just talking about this yesterday because it is a game changer. And like, mm-hmm. if you have a lot of hair, like sometimes it's frustrating to like have to like redo your whole head situation just to make a hat work. I know this is dramatic, yeah. but if you know, you know. Oh, um, no. <laughs> I'm going to look it up just because it's such a good product and we started carrying it and they even have a bucket hat with that. So like if oh. you want to do, yeah. So if you want to do a whole... A whole situation. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I hadn't seen the bucket hat, but when I found it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is so smart. And it's a good change up from always wearing a visor. So because I don't wear hats because yeah, the hair situation. It's called Vimu, V-I-M-H-U-E. And they have several different models. Like I said, there's a bucket hat. It's called the Sun Goddess Bucket Hat. So yes, designed by a woman. <laughs> it had to be. Game changer. Yeah, it's awesome. And they keep adding styles. And I'm like, oh, man. And yeah, U- UPF 50 plus sun protection. It's a polyester right. microfiber. Like, you can't go wrong. So that's all mm-hmm. a great gift. Have you ever done experiences for gifts? Like, do you, are you like one of those people that buy, like, I, I do that with my family now. So I've been talking yeah. about that a lot. Like tickets to like Miami or like BNP or something. Oh, yeah. That would be so fun. I would love to get that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think as a coach, fan, player, whatever. I right? mean, that's, that's always a great gift, a ticket to to any tennis tournament. I mean, yeah. That's, that's great. It's an amazing, amazing idea. Totally. Um, And then you work with like, players of all ages so what are you gonna get for your junior players like what are some ideas for the parents maybe you're you're spending a lot of time on court with them what do they need yeah I think juniors um if if they're you know teenagers and they actually watch tennis and they have a favorite player I think always just kind of matching the outfit of their favorite tennis player I love that. I think that that's always Always a win, you know. I growing up, I love I love Sharapova, and any dress she had, <laughs> um, I wanted. And sometimes they didn't even look good on me because they fit. The fit was kind of weird. But <laughs> I still wore it because she wore it, you know. So anything that that their favorite player is wearing, um, or a bag, I think you can go wrong with those. And then with the little kids, um, <laughs> And, and even not just kids, I think this is for anyone, adults, juniors, uh, or teenagers. I mean, um, the dampener situation nowadays is amazing. There right. are so many different types and, and designs, and they're really cool. They, you know, they can match your personality, the things that you like. They can be an inside joke. Um, you know, so I think it's a really fun way to show to show your personality on the court is just to have a, a really fun dampener on your racket. I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're so cute. I have yeah. t- two little girls that I do lessons with and like I'll give them new dampeners every so often. And it's like the best day ever. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it works better than candy. <laughs> <laughs> Although candy works quite well too some days. <laughs> yeah, but the parents don't appreciate that. Uh-uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's awesome. Uh, what about, what about someone that's newer to tennis? Are you still seeing a lot of people starting tennis and like kind of, yeah. Oh, good. We love to hear that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So beginners, beginners, a lot of the times they want, uh, I would say shoes. A lot of times the beginners don't have shoes, like proper tennis shoes. Yeah. Um, and that's a game changer. People don't realize what a difference it makes to, to wear proper tennis shoe, um yeah other than that anything fashionable um I was going to say too when we were talking about brands I love what I'm seeing now in tennis is that all these brands are kind of coming to tennis like aloe lululemon uh all these like yoga or they started as yoga brands but Mm -hmm. um or or fashion brands even right like we have the Italians like wearing Hugo Boss and amazing (laughs) um 
And yeah, just to see that, I think it's really exciting for, for tennis. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a fashionable sport. Right. Uh, totally. And then it, there's a lot of the athleisure crossover. So like, I don't know about you. Obviously, we're in the tennis world. I'm assuming you wear tennis stuff most of the day. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Same. Every day. <laughs> Same. Like sometimes I'll like pair a like nice sweater with like my Lululemon shorts and I'm like, make it work. It's athleisure. <laughs> but Exactly. Yeah. What well, like, I was saying about leggings. I'm like, can we just make leggings normal in tennis? Because I do everything in leggings. <laughs> so I'm going to share another brand with you. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's spelled O-N apostrophe R-E. And we're pronouncing it on Ray. But... Okay. They are new to tennis wear new ish to tennis warehouse, and they make a legging specifically for tennis. The compression is awesome because oh, you know nice. how like sometimes you have to pull them up all day, and you're like, ugh, no. Yeah. It's got like the thick waistband, but then they have the pocket, not pocket, but under the waistband in the back, you can put your balls in. So it's oh, only wow. the back half, and you can hold up to four balls. And then there's like really nice venting on the bottom. So if it is hot and you're wearing leggings, you're not going to be like overheating. And it's like such a nice material. And they have the the capri length and the full length. And they're coming yeah. out with skirts. So like it's just a different brand to kind of like take a look at. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, a lot of times leggings are uh, offer UPF protection too. Uh, which again, right back to the sun protection, right. not just for coaches. I think this is for everyone. Yeah. Um, I started wearing leggings for teaching maybe two years ago. My legs are finally back to their original color. <laughs> I don't look like a flag anymore, you know, and especially like I started, I started wearing calf sleeves, mm -hmm. right? So then the tan lines were going crazy, right? Right. Because it's your skirt, your calf sleeve, your sock. It was ridiculous. That is so crazy. now we're in leggings. It's like perfect. Are you wearing zinc on your face? What do you wear? Yeah, I wear the zinc. Nice. Do you do yeah. the full like the white or? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. <laughs> no, I, I love it. It was like super popular back in like the 90s. And I only know a handful of people that still use it. Yeah, it's not the best looking thing on your face. No. <laughs> uh, but they now sell some tinted ones too. Uh, I think she's, she's, she's Cito, she's Cito. Oh, yep. Yep. Wrong. Yeah. Um, they have a tinted one if you don't want to look all pasty. Um, sometimes like if I have like an event, uh, or something like that and I'm teaching and then I have to jump on and like kind of look decent, yeah. I'll put a little bit of makeup on top of it Okay. and, and it does a trick. <laughs> That's awesome. That's another topic I would love to have with more women is like, what are your like sweat proof makeup hacks or like brands because I like to wear makeup and like I'll wear eyeshadow mascara and I don't really do the whole like foundation thing like I don't like the feel of foundation when I'm working out but like for yeah. if we're doing videos and stuff it's sometimes important but like I'm so curious like what other women are wearing and they like look amazing and it's like sweat proof and yeah yeah it's interesting to see some of the pros like wear makeup for matches i don't judge it honestly because if i was going to be on tv, TV yeah. Actually, like yeah i would put a little something you yeah know? yeah i would want to look good right so i don't blame them for it uh you know sometimes it can go a little bit overboard <laughs> but hey you know it's it's a personal thing it's a personal decision and how you want to look but this is what i always tell people <clears throat> the the zinc sunscreen is the best because um, it acts right away. So it's a sun block. So it blocks the, the sun like right away. It's not like you have to wait, you know, 30 minutes or whatever for it to, to you know, be absorbed and all that. It works right away. Um, you can tell it like if you've missed a spot, right? Um, and my favorite thing is that is it, I, I don't know what, how to describe it, but when I wear regular sunscreen, mm -hmm. I feel that I sweat more. It feels like heavy on me. And if it goes in my eyes, it's like Game over. the worst. Yeah. So the zinc stuff, actually, you don't sweat as much. It doesn't cost you to sweat like that grease right from the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't smear like that. And it doesn't go in your eyes like that. So, I mean, I ever since I switched to the, to the zinc, mm -hmm. I, I never went back. 
And are you getting it somewhere in particular? You got to give us all the tips. Where are you buying um, this? <laughs> well, for the sunscreen, I, I'm now using the sh- Shiseido. I'm okay. not, I don't know how to pronounce That's it. That's okay. <laughs> uh, it's kind of pricey. I think it's like 40 something dollars for like the bottle of it. Yeah. But it's worth it. Yeah. Like it's really good. It has so when you want to look at the at the zinc sunscreen, you want a high percent of zinc oxide, I think it's mm-hmm. called, uh, or titanium. Um, and you know, you want like at least 20%. So that one is like that. Um so yeah, it's really pasty though. It's I always say it's like putting toothpaste on your face. Yeah. Uh, but so you just have to like rub it and and kind of get used to it. Um, you know, but that's that's the one that I really like, but there's so many others. I like Kula. I like um, Kula. That's a really great brand. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll give you a quick tip yeah. for sunscreen. At least here in Florida, um, this you're gonna love me for this. <laughs> um, go to a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx, and you can get really nice sunscreens. All On these sale. like really nice brands for like fifty percent off. Um, and you can really just kind of try which ones you like. That is the best thing that I've discovered in the <laughs> sunscreen world because I feel like I should own stock in sunscreen. I use it so much. Right. So, oh yeah. my gosh. I know. And there's like all this like research coming out. I literally just saw a video this week and I haven't done my research, so I can't speak too much about it. But it's like about American sunscreens just not really being at all like effective. And there's like something about a Korean sunscreen that's like amazing. I like I said I haven't dived into it yet but like as we age and um pro tip also put sunscreen on your hands because like if I could tell my younger self at 12 13 14 15 16 it would be cover your hands in sunscreen because my hands Mm -hmm. look like a grandma yeah Uh, (laughs) apply and you're don't forget about the lips so many tennis pros go through skin cancer um around their lips yes um, mm-hmm. So, yes, it's so important. And, like, yeah, figure out the best coverage that works for you. And, like, these are all great, like, gifts also for the coach and pro in your life. You could, like, pair it with some cute, like, accessories or whatnot. And <laughs> it would be a cute yeah, little exactly. gift. Yeah. And you'd be surprised. I've met some guys, guys, I, I, I haven't met the first woman to say this yet, but some guy pros that don't believe in sunscreen. And I'm like, hey, do you boo whatever <laughs> i'm putting my sunscreen on thank you very much but hey do you i don't wear, know what about that <laughs> do you wear sunglasses also yes yeah i was gonna say like so in a couple years ago i would say about like when i first turned 30 i started asking athletes that were older than me like what's something that you would tell your younger self and the biggest one, especially in the running community, was wear sunglasses. And now I like, I feel so weird if I'm not wearing sunglasses and I'm out in the sun because yeah. like the and wrinkles, another, and the eye protection. Yeah. And that's another great gift. You know, sunglasses are a little funny because I I have to wear sunglasses. Otherwise I get a headache because of the, the, the light. The glare. And, yeah. It's yeah. right. So I have to wear them. But when I'm, when I get serious, like if I wanted to go play a set, I have to take them off. Same. It's like weird. (laughs) Same. So for teaching, for being outdoors, you know, wear all day. Yeah. And there's a lot of brands right now, like Gooder, that are affordable, which is nice because we don't have to be spending a hundred plus dollars on Oakley's, but we can Mm -hmm. buy cute ones that match every outfit or your personality or whatever. So yeah, those are really fun ones. They are. I love them. Um, what else? What about like a present or a gift for a teammate? I'm sure you work with a lot of teams and USTA players. What are, what do you think are some good ideas or something different out of the box? Yeah. Um, if you wanted to stay, you know, kind of tennis inspired, I'd say the ladies usually love anything monogrammed. So if you can get, you know, anything, a bag, um, a towel, um, anything that's kind of personalized, I think those are usually really popular, really that's nice. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that idea. So, yeah. Anything like that. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I can think of, or, you know, even some tennis inspired, uh, like glassware or, yes. um, or yeah, things that you can have in the kitchen, you know, little things like that. Um, 
or in your house, you know, totally. I think those, those are always well received. And if you want to splurge, I think a bag, you know, a fashionable bag. Is yes. Always, yeah. Always what are you, what are some trends that you're seeing with the ladies out on the court? Yeah. So <laughs> it's a little funny because, so the club where I was at this last summer, it's all white. Okay. Right? So the white thing is, is it's real. <laughs> It's a struggle. We know? always talk about those clubs as if they don't really exist, but it's they um, are. They do. They do. I tend to work at those clubs, <laughs> and it's great. Uh, it, it definitely looks really nice. Mm-hmm. It's a good look, but it's really hard to keep white to white. You know, totally. everything turns yellow. And by the way, that's another thing I've noticed with sunscreen: is your sunscreen will turn your whites yellow like that. Uh, zinc doesn't. Oh, nice. Yes. So there's something different with the formulation. Um, this is, you know, I'm I'm not an expert in this, but (laughs) I've been in tennis for a long time and I've had to take care of a lot of whites. Yeah. And I I did notice a big difference when I switched sunscreens to zinc. That's good to know. uh, In the yellowing. Yeah. Um, so that makes a huge difference. Um, but yeah, the white stuff, it's, it's always a struggle and you know, the trends that I see, I see a lot of people wearing these brands that I was telling you about, like the aloes mm-hmm. and, and like the more fashion. Trendy. Forward yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. cool. yeah. And I really like it. I mean, I love aloe. I think it's so cool. It's expensive. But it's <laughs> really nice. <laughs> it does look nice. And I, it, I mean, I think there's like all of a sudden this like movement where like we all don't want to be wearing the same thing and we like want to kind of put our own personality into the outfit or at least that's how I feel. And Mm -hmm. that's what like these other companies like are providing is like something different. It's not like the same skirt that everyone's wearing. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, Florida is very different from the Northeast because in the Northeast, people are only outside really in the summer, so uh-huh. they don't care. I think a lot of times they don't even wear sunscreen. Right. Um, but in Florida, um, people dress – a lot of people actually will dress like me. That Like they'll wear the long Covered. sleeve UPF shirts. Yeah. Um, you know, even if they're pairing it with a with a skirt. Uh, sometimes they'll it, this looks really cute. It's like the skirt with the tall or high socks. I like that look. That's cute. Uh, and offers you some extra sun protection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are some of the trends that I that I see on the guy side. Honestly, I feel like guys don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like they'll wear the same outfit from ten years ago, um, and it's like whatever. <laughs> yeah, so. it's like there's two. Ver- I feel like there's the guy that will dress with like the brand new Nike K or like just what Rafa's wearing. But then there's also the yeah. guy that's like, yeah, I've had this shirt for fifteen years and it still works. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, I want to ask you, what do you think about the tank tops from the U.S. Open? On the guys? The guys, yeah. I mean, if you got it, flaunt it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I like that. Right? I don't know. I I don't mind it. I don't like, like, the long – I like the shorter short trend on the guys, personally. I'd prefer that than the longer shorts. But, um, yeah, Yeah. it it is fun to see – well, and then it's like you're circling trends, you know, like this is like the repeat of Rafa, like when he had the, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like a shout out to him, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yes. right? yeah. yeah. So a little bit of his legacy and, you know, he's still around. He just announced he's going to be for sure making his comeback. So oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I really miss him. I'm a big Rafa girl. That's what I was going to say. Who are your favorite players, pro players to watch and like fashion icons that you like? Oh, so those are two different questions. Yes, they are. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> so on the tennis side, on the guys, you know, I'm a big Roger and Rafa fan. Yeah. Uh, a thousand percent. You have there. to be. <laughs> will forever be in my heart. Growing up, I loved Agassi. Um, I loved Marat Safin. I, you know, was disappointed to find out I was never going to marry him. <laughs> uh, I had the biggest crush on him. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um but anyway, th- those were my kind of my favorite players. And on the women's side, I mean, Steffi Graf was my favorite. Same. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, I love Lindsay Davenport. Uh, obviously, the Williams sisters, right? They yeah. were, to me, they're the biggest icons in fashion, in tennis. They're the biggest name that we will ever hear of on the yeah. women's I mean, it's Venus and Serena. They changed, they changed the game. They changed everything. And yeah. Ever since they came out, 
the first time I saw them, I was like, oh, they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then do you have anyone that you really like their fashion or like even if it's our off court look? Yeah, so I I always appreciated Serena, mm -hmm. right? Because she pushes okay, so the boundaries. The controversial cat suit. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. I, I was so bummed that it got banned because that's a slap in the face to athletes. Because that is, she was wearing it for for functional reasons, right? Yeah, right. So I think that was ridiculous, and I really loved it. I thought it was so edgy, so different. Yeah, um, and I always liked her weird outfits when she wore like a jean shirt. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, you. Like it's so it was so cool, so different. What I really loved was Sharapova because she she had a like a more classic style, more something that I would actually wear. And nowadays, I actually really like um, the girl that beat Serena. Isla. Isla. I knew you're gonna say that. Yeah. She's the best. Yes. She's so pretty. I really like her. <laughs> so the dress she was wearing in that match with Penguin. The, yeah, yep. went, yeah, with the collar, yep. I thought it was really cute, really preppy, you know, maybe too preppy for the U.S. Open, but I loved it. She's um, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I love and then her. with the crop top, long sleeve, I love it. So cool. And, she, and obviously Stella McCartney. Oh, Adidas, yeah. Stella McCartney. So good, right? Yeah. And now Caroline Wozniacki is back. A lot of people really like her fashion. I know even working with the Adidas team, they're so happy that she's back because she wears the clothes so well. And like every, like yeah. she's literally the nicest human. So it's like yeah, everyone, she yeah, she's an amazing one. Yes. I don't oh. know about that bodysuit though. <laughs> right? Same. I'm like a little, I'm like totally cool with that if you want to practice in that, but put a skirt over for a match. Just, just personally. Not that My she didn't look was, good. How do you go to the bathroom? You have to take the whole thing off. <laughs> Well, and I'm just like losing my mind that these bodysuits, like I remember being younger wearing a Nike bodysuit. I can still picture it. And it was like teal and like a little like tie dye vibe. And now their bodysuits are back. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. Oh, and also I probably when you were growing up too, I think we're, we might be. I think I'm older than you. I'm guessing. Well, I don't know. We would, we don't have to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you remember Anna Kornikova? She had really unique stuff. Like she she wore the shorts. The, the shorts, yeah. Well, yeah. and then even just the little Adidas shorties with the three stripes. I mean, yeah. I went to a tennis academy my junior and senior year of high school, and there was not a girl there that was not wearing those shorts. <laughs> Everyone was mm -hmm. just wearing exactly. those little Adidas shorts. Yeah. And she had she came up. Uh, well, I don't know if it was her. I'm sure it was Adidas, but. Uh, like the three quarter length, um, it, it was like not a full on long sleeve. Yeah, you know yeah, was, totally. I love that look, and she even put it on a dress. I yeah. keep saying she, but <laughs> <laughs> she's a fashion icon. She was so beautiful. I loved her too. I that's so funny because I was um going through my Instagram the other day and I came across hers and her cute little family with Enrique. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> um, what about this year? What were your favorite looks of this year? Do you remember any? Um, like US Open? Yeah. yeah. Um, French? Um, I think, well, yeah, I really like Isla's penguin outfit for, for the, the US Open. Yeah. I think the US Open this year was a big miss. I, I wasn't a huge fan. I think people either liked it or hated it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, it wasn't for me. Um, you know, it, it's funny because I did I wasn't a huge fan of the crop top. Not because of the crop top, but because of the design on it. Okay. I thought it was kind of weird. Um, but I I liked, um, uh, I want to say Fritzy. What's his name? Oh, Taylor. Taylor yeah. Well, Fritz, right? Yeah. <laughs> I almost said Taylor Swift. Taylor <laughs> Fritz. Um, he actually wore like a normal tennis outfit. So yeah. I thought that looked a lot better than what the other guys were wearing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because Tiafo was like kind of out there, if I'm remembering correctly yeah it's yeah like two, two out there for yeah me. what about Sabalenka um, did you like her look or Madison Keys because those were the nice yeah it was okay I okay. mean it's just, it's, it, to me it was just like your your normal tennis dress yeah you know? it was it was okay it's definitely something that wear um now I think it was a hit, big miss by Adidas with that like bat fitting skirt I mean that skirt is it's it really long. Yeah. Just Pagula. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And you know that like most of these, not most, but like the top players are getting these like fitted to fit them. So, or at least I think. That's always allegedly. something I wonder because some players, I'm like, 
how how do they let them go out like that? Like they are professionals. Like make them look great, and they're representing you. Like how can you let? How can you do this to them? <laughs> what about what about Coco Goff? Because she kind of has a little bit more street style. Do you like that look? Like her vibe? Love it. Yeah, I same. love her. Yes, yes. I love the, her. Her shoes are amazing. The I love yellow them. or was that color called short? chartreuse or something like that yeah yeah that chartreuse and it, was it with red am i making things up? yeah it yeah, was like okay. a nice color combination but i really liked it nice yeah. nice and the, the crop top again i think the the crop tops are gonna are gonna be a thing yeah it sure seems like they're trending for sure i struggle with like a crop top because i feel like my body just doesn't work well with them but i respect yeah. them on the people that it looks really good um, yeah, it's a look. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah. I do like the idea of the long sleeve crop top. I haven't tried yeah. to pull it off yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, what else? Let's see. Okay. we Dang, it's already, we're into this. Um, I was going to wrap up with some, maybe we could talk through some realistic goal setting for 2024. Do you have clients or people that come to you and say like, hey, I really want to do this X, Y, and Z in the year to come and like make resolutions about improving their tennis? Or is it more like you're working with people that just are having a good time on the court? Yeah, I will answer this. Just give me one second. Yeah. I, I wanted to give a shout out to Ace the Moon. Oh my gosh, yes. Because they, they put us in contact together and I'm really, I really want them to succeed and do really well. They're an all-American brand, tennis lifestyle brand. And they are so fun. Um, that's a great gift for anybody. I they am have obsessed. The, the say tennis. Yes. It's just a fun tennis gift for anybody. So that's something that, you know, people should definitely check out. And I know Tennis Warehouse carries them. So, yes. you know. No, perfect. we are big Ace the Moon fans. And like, I was telling them I got the big tennis hat and it, I was coaching a team and it's like, it became my lucky hat. And it was like, I'm obsessed. Like I literally have something of theirs on me usually all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. It's so, so cool. it's unique and fun. Um, so I wanted to give them a shout out. So before, before I went into, you know, your question yes. um, for, so goal setting. So I think um, it's always important I think, you know, especially this time of the year to kind of take an inventory of how, you know, where you're at in, in your tennis, right. And just kind of see, okay, I did really well with this and this and this, maybe not so well with, you know, that, whatever it is, you know, maybe nutrition, maybe yeah. um, conditioning, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the one thing that that I would focus on in, in 2024 is, you know, whatever your week is at, start with that. That's good. Um, and then come up with a plan for it and don't call it a resolution because <laughs> I think when you call it a resolution, it kind of gives you an easy out. Like, oh, it was a resolution, you know, it lasted a month. Haha. <laughs> right. Um, but if you just, just do it and like just fully commit to improving that, then, then you'll get it done. Yeah. And something to be said, or I like use the word goals a lot, but, um, being able to come up with things that are like realistic, like we're not going to make a goal to for the 2024 to like win the US Open when we're not even pro players. Like, right. <laughs> like let's be real. Um, and then also just focus on the on the improvement, not the result. I think totally. the goal should never be like win nationals, um, you know, have this record because now you're focused on the result. You're not focused on the process. You're not focused on um enjoying also like what you're doing right yeah. you're just your joy is going to come out of whether you won or lost and that's never good for sure and it's also yeah for sure you have to remember like why you want to do it anyways and for most of us it's because we're having fun on the court and making friends and getting good workouts and all of the things so yeah yeah and also it's a good to remember too just because i know like you mentioned you might set a goal and then a month or two later be like over it, but realize that you can always start a new, you can jump back in. It doesn't have to be January 1st. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't like to do resolutions because I know that they're just not, you know, not going to be real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes people get a little too crazy, but like maybe your goal can be like to go to the French Open in 2024 because that would be badass. <laughs> Yeah, with the Olympics. Right? I know. Have you I went, I went I was say, have you gotten year. to go to any? Yes. I went this year to to Roland Garros for the first time in my life. And 
It did not disappoint. Really? I- it was amazing. I loved it. Um, I've been to the US Open many times. And, you know, it's a very different experience. But I really, it had its, its good and bad. I think getting tickets yeah. was the bad part. Yeah. It, like the process for getting tickets, it's so difficult um, to, to find tickets. <laughs> for the all. U.S. Open or for the French? No, well, for the French. Okay. U.S. Open. The like, FFT, you yeah. To the tennis master. Or yeah, not yeah. Tennis, <laughs> the master um, and, and get tickets or whatever, you know. But for the, yeah, for the French Open, it was, it was very hard and stressful to get tickets. And it's quite um, small. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the bots, you know, they're, they're our biggest enemy when it comes to <laughs> tickets for anything. Right. So, um, so that wasn't so great, but I loved how intimate everything is. Like it's not huge, like at the U S open, you know, yeah. and, um, I really like that you can bring water, you can bring food. The, the food that you buy on the ground is like normal price. It's yeah. Not, it's not $20 for <laughs> you know, for a little bottle of water, like right. it's like normal price and and good quality. So it's I thought that that was really it's just really nice. It's really respectful to the fans, and, for sure. And you know, it helps tennis too. You yeah, know? Who, who wants to go to the U.S. Open? And how much is a uh, honeydews nowadays? Oh my gosh, it's crazy! It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Have you been to BMP at Indian Wells? No, but that's on my list. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pro- I always say I'm going to go next year. I know. Um, and then something comes up and I don't, but I'm going to go, I'm going to try to go next year. <laughs> I say that about Miami. I'm always like, cause I'll go to Indian Wells and then I'm like, let's go to Miami. Like, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I just wait. I've been, I, I, I've been to Miami when it was in Key Biscayne and I've been to the new one, the new site. The new site is amazing. It's that's like a mini US Open. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, the stadium court, it feels a little weird because it's a football stadium oh, and then yeah. they kind of adjust it to tennis. But the grounds, um, just how everything is it, so well done. And yeah, it's just the quality so much better. And when it was in Key Biscayne, the traffic was insane because you have to go over this bridge. Oh, yeah. And now it's just like the location is a lot easier to access. So it's it's a great tournament. I love I love going. Okay, it's great. we're putting it on the bucket list. <laughs> we'll keep putting it out there. Yeah, you should do it. It would be fun. <laughs> um, that's awesome. What else? I think. Oh, I was gonna ask you just to wrap up. Do you have any personal favorite tennis moments from your year? Like things that you can reflect on and say, like that was awesome, or that was one of my favorite moments of 2023 on the court. For mine or like on TV? No, yours, your personal ones. From this year, um, so uh, I hate to do this because it's not tennis. That's okay. I'll give a shout out to Padel. So oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, it's a you know a new racket sport, and and trust me, I'm not like crazy about promoting all the other racket sports. I'm a tennis person through and through. Uh, but I discovered uh, Padel, and I really like it. It's so fun with the walls and stuff. Yeah. Um, so give that a shout out. So I think that was really fun. The biggest moment for me tennis-wise was just being at the French Open. That's honestly. cool. Yeah. Being the courts and and I got to watch um, Sinner play Altmaier. It was like a five-hour match. I, it was ridiculously long. Um, but it was so fun. I, I could not move from my seat. Like yeah. I was at the edge of my seat. It was it was great. That's so awesome. no, that that has to be that <laughs> being at, at like center court and you know at the French Open with amazing tickets. That was that was insane. <laughs> that's awesome. Hopefully there's going to be another moment in 2024 that's going to rival that one and maybe Wimbledon or Australian Open or something. Who knows? I BMP. know. I'm, I'm yet to go to Wimbledon. Uh, those tickets are I was going to say, talk about hard tickets to get. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it's fun. But I'm really working in the summer. So oh, right. it's, it doesn't work with my schedule too well. But I love Wimbledon. And, you know, it's probably my favorite one to watch on the TV. Uh, in Australia, like, I don't know. That's a really long flight. <laughs> it's a really long flight. I know. I know. Everyone talks about what this a good time. Long <laughs> right? I know. I know. It's yeah, it's one of those where I'm like, I'm good watching, but also it would be cool to go to yeah. Australia. Not not like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I mean like, <laughs> you wanna take like, me? <laughs> yeah. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, th- thanks for such a fun, easy chat, Jennifer. This is really cool. Thank you. And it was fun. Yeah. Will you go ahead and promote yourself and your podcast so people can check you out and follow along with everything that you're doing? 
Sure. So the name of the podcast is Vida Tennis. That's V-I-D-A as in life in Spanish, right? So Tennis Live, Vida Tennis. Uh, and you can find it on any podcast platform. So if you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever, Amazon, it's on there. Nice. So, um, yeah. And it's, you know, it's an insight look at the tennis industry. And okay. they're all about an hour long, which, by the way, I like that you do an hour because, um, I mean, you talk about gear, but for me, I feel like uh, doing the hour episodes, it, you always get to the juicy stuff towards <laughs> the end, uh, right. you know, because once you get, you know, over the intros and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I like I like having a longer episode. <laughs> it's also just crazy how fast time flies by when you're actually talking about things that you like and you like look at the clock and yeah. you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> we're there. You, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Do you ever have anxiety going into an episode though? And you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be long enough or like. No, I think, you know, sometimes because I interview people, sometimes people are just nervous. Yeah. You know, or they, they're afraid that they're going to say something that they're going to regret or, you know, if they're a tennis professional, you know, they don't want anything to reflect bad on them. So that can be a little bit tough if, if they're not talking a whole lot. Right. I know. <laughs> like pull it out little by little, but you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot too. So it's a skill that I'm developing as a, as a host. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll finish a conversation. I'm like, oh, I don't know about it. I, it didn't feel that great. And then I edit it. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I I know that feeling quite well. Or like you go into one, you're like, oh, I don't. Not that I don't want to do it. But like there's sometimes where I'm like, I don't really know what we're going to talk about beyond 15 minutes. And then you finish and you're like, oh, that was really cool. That person was really cool. I'm super glad I had this conversation. So. Yeah, I've had that too. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's awesome. Well, we are all going to go check out your podcast. We'll put it in the show notes and all that because we thank love- Thank you so much. Yeah, we love all thank things you, thank tennis. Thank you, <laughs> And thanks so much for joining us and happy holidays and happy hitting. Yeah, you too.